morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Aquarium Live. My name is James. I work here at the Education Department at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to learn about our senses today. But while we're doing that, you get to participate, too. We have a phone number that you can text in. But remember, message rates do apply. If you'd like to ask us questions, if you'd like to share your observations with us, text us right here at 562-286-1838. Now, even if you're not watching live, guess what? You can participate too. We have this fancy email. You can email us at live at lbaop.org, and you can still ask us questions, and one of our staff members will help you out. Now, I have Dana behind the computer helping show you what's behind me on the screen, and I have one of my friends over on the other side of the office helping ask me the questions that you ask them. Allie's going to be relaying some of those to us. All right, so let's get into senses. Do you remember all of our five basic senses? You want to, uh, we have eyes. You're watching me. Maybe. That's okay if you're not. You have your sense of hearing. You're listening to me. Also, maybe not. That's okay, too. Um, what else do we have? Ah, our sense of touch. We can touch things. Very good. What else is there? Let me... Ah, our sense of smell. We can smell things. It's almost lunchtime. You know what that means. We get to use our sense of taste. Are we missing anything? Oh, we got uh, ears, eyes, sound, touch, taste. I think that's it. That's all five of them. Well, we're going to learn about how our animals here at the aquarium might use some of those senses and if they have any other special senses that they get to use. Now, I want to show you a video of some fish. They have a very special sense that they get to use when they're swimming around in a group. Now, these are the blue striped snapper, and they're a tropical fish. Let's take a look at what the snapper are doing, and let's see if we can figure out how they get to do this. That is a lot of fish. Okay, these might be sardines, but I know there's snapper in here somewhere. How do they do that? Oh, do you watch how they swim all in unison like the snapper are doing right now? That's so interesting. How do they get to do this? Wow, do you see all like the light flashing and these big fish? Maybe they want lunch, but not today because those fish swimming in a school are moving out of the way of them. Hmm. Let's keep thinking about how they might realize where they're all moving to. And we'll talk a little bit about fish senses, animal senses, and we'll get to meet up with Captain Joe today to make sure that he can tell us a little bit more about animal senses too. Do you want to see what Captain Joe is doing? He's got to be somewhere inside the aquarium right now. Where's Captain Joe? Hmm. He must be on a delay. He must be a little bit farther away in the building. But don't forget to text us questions. Hello, boys and girls. Captain Joe of the Ocean Rangers. Now, I'm here observing this huge group of fish behind me. And if you just watching them, have you ever wondered on how they all move together and turn at the same exact time? I always thought this as well, and I think this is a great place for us to start our exploration of senses today. Now, there are many reasons why a fish would be in a group or school. Well, not that kind of school. I'm talking about a group of fish. It's called a school. Now, so many different reasons why they would be in it. Maybe finding food, avoiding predators, even getting new boyfriends and girlfriends. But have you ever wondered why they can do this or how? That's a great question, Captain Joe. I think we should start our exploration there. Now, how do they do it? Well, it just so happens that fish have the same senses as us, but they use them a little differently sometimes too. In addition to taste, smell, hearing, sight, and touch, they can also sense movement. And this is because of a special line of nerves down their side called a lateral line. Well, that's really good. We were just asking our young friends in the audience about that. So, let's see if we can take a look at one of my fish diagrams. Hold on, let me go get it real quick. I have a very interesting fish that you might recognize. Ta-da! Do you recognize this fish? It's a clownfish or an anemone fish. So all fish that Captain Joe is talking about have a line that goes down their side that they can sense movement. So when we were watching the video of all those fish swim together in a school, 
they can sense where they're all swimming to. So it's like we can feel the wind blow through our hair. They can feel the water blow past these little tiny cells on the sides of their body that have a little, almost what looks like hair-like part sticking out. And they can sense the movement as they all start going somewhere. So when the fish in the front turns one direction, they're all going to follow. So as long as one of them starts moving, the rest of them are going to start moving in the same direction. So they really love to play follow the leader and they can help each other move around out of the way of predators or into different spaces. So that's a really interesting sense that these animals have. Can you think of any other special senses animals might have? Well, there's a lot of special abilities have that other animals have. If you were watching earlier today, Allie was talking about camouflage. Well, that's not really a sense, but it is a special ability that they use. So there's a lot of interesting things that animals can do, but we're going to keep checking in on Captain Joe a little bit later. But remember all five senses that we talked about? Joe helped us re remember them too. Remember we have smell, taste, sight, touch, and hearing. So great. We have those five basic senses. Now there's another list of senses in our body. When you're walking around, can you tell that you're moving? That's another special sense. What about balance? If you're off balance a little bit, that's another special sense that we have. So we have our five basic senses, but then we have a whole group of other senses that help us survive in our habitat. Do you think an octopus has to worry be about balance? Maybe not, since they don't really walk around on land, but they might need to know if they're upside down or if they're being pushed on by other things. So all creatures have different kinds of senses to help them move and explore their environment. Do you like to explore? I bet you do. So next time you're exploring, it could be your living room, it could be a park, it could be anywhere you get to go. Remember to use all your senses to help you explore and learn more about your surroundings. All right, now I think Captain Joe should be checking in with us pretty soon. What's Captain that Joe doing? That is amazing, and not only that, but oh. What? Studio, on, I, I think I just felt something swoosh against my arm here. I, uh, I definitely felt something. I, we can't see anything, oh, Captain Joe. There it was again. Boys and girls, I think there is something in here with me. I just don't Oh, no, I don't think I go. Oh, no. What happened to Captain Joe? Hmm. Well, he is an ocean ranger. He's very well trained. I bet he will be just fine. We'll have to check in with him in a few minutes. Let's make sure we answer your questions too. So don't, don't forget, we have a number that you can text in to ask us questions about our animals today. At 562-286-1838, you can text us questions. Now, if you're one of our young viewers, remember to have an adult that you're with help you text in. Remember, text rates do apply. Now, Valentina did ask, do all fish have a lateral line? As far as I know, most do. But let's think of fish that don't have to swim around in a group. Hmm. What about an eel? Eels might still be able to sense movement, but they don't really have to swim as a group. Now, as far as I know, most fish have a lateral line, even flatfish that lay on the sand and in the, on the floor. But I can't guarantee that every fish does because fish have a large amount of abilities to survive. And there's such a great variety of fish that there's bound to be some fish that don't have one. And we may not have even discovered it yet. That's the best part about science is we're always learning something new and we will always find something that tries to help us rewrite the rules or re-understand how we want to interpret the world around us. Okay, now remember, you can still ask us questions. Let's see if we can go into one of our webcams around the building and let's make some observations of our animals and see if we can figure out how they are exploring their environment. Now we have a bunch of different places to explore. This is our deepest exhibit. This is Blue Cavern. Not just because it looks kind of blue, it's an actual dive site off of Catalina that we replicated here inside the Aquarium of the Pacific. This is a 27 foot deep exhibit with over 140,000 gallons of water. Now this is one of our webcams that you can watch at any time of the day that you would like to. You can go to our website and look for our Blue Cavern webcam. Did you see the schooling fish? 
It's like they knew we were talking about them. Those were the sardines. Now, coming around the backside, we'll see them in a little bit. There's the sardines again. Around the backside were the mackerel and our one Pacific barracuda. He, he, normally, they would school with more barracuda, but he found some other friends that he can hang out with that are a similar color to him. Does the Garibaldi like to school? Doesn't quite look like it. What about these fish right here with the black spot on the back of their head? These are called half moons. Now, there's a couple ways fish group. There's the school, like the sardines you see here. See how oh, they turned around, and then they're all going to kind of follow. And they, wait, never mind. We're going to keep going this way. So they do make decisions. Fish do have brains. They do think about things. Not quite like we do, but they do think, and they do have to process and explore their environment. But other fish, like these half moons, they might hang out in the same area, but not always swim in the same direction at the same time. We call that shoaling. And then there's Garibaldi. And they just do whatever they want. They don't have to be in a group, and they don't care. And that's okay. Garibaldi are very territorial. They don't like to be around a lot of other fish. That's just how Garibaldi are. They make a nest in a special area that they take and they protect it, and they don't want anybody else to come into their space. That's just how Garibaldi are. Some fish school, some fish shoal, and other fish just kind of hang out on their own. So fish have a lot of behaviors that help them survive too. Now, all right, we have some more questions we should get to. Avery is asking, do the fish bump into each other? Well, if you had to swim this close to your body all day, you might bump into them. They're not really gonna bump into each other hard. And remember, they're not competing for first place. They're not really going in a race. So they do sometimes bump into each other, but it's not very much or very hard. Alan's asking, what are the predators of animals? Let's think of an animal that might want to eat fish that are only this big. Hmm. It could be almost any fish that's even bigger than them. Fish do like to eat a lot of other fish. They do like seafood. And one big predator might try to, uh, try to swim into this group of sardines and gobble up a bunch of them at once. That's called an ambush predator. They kind of wait and wait and wait. And as soon as the fish come close enough to them, they just suck them all in. Other fish, like let's say a yellowtail or even a shark, will chase after their food to catch them. And then there's even other predators that grab their food off the ground. So it kind of depends on what they eat and what they are and who they're trying to eat. I don't know who tries to eat Garibaldi because, well, hey Garibaldi, because Garibaldi are, like I said, they're very territorial. They get kind of mean, and that's just how Garibaldi are. But sometimes the predators can overpower that and still hunt an animal that is still very cranky with them. All right, now Joaquin is asking, do all fish have senses? Yeah, all the fish do. And some of them have even different senses than we've talked about so far. That's what's really interesting. Some fish have better eyesight, some fish have better smell, but they all have some amount of different senses. Let's think about a fish that lives in a deep, dark ocean. Do they need eyesight as good as a fish like this one? Probably not. Since there's not a lot of light, they don't need to see very much. There's some fish who, over time, have adapted to not have eyes. Interesting, kind of like mole rats, no longer have eyesight. Well, some mole rats. Some fish can no longer see either because over time that wasn't something that benefited them and so their bodies adapted away from that because you could be a successful predator without eyesight. That's interesting. Now, Olivia and Abita are asking, do ocean animals always taste with their mouth or their nose? <gasps> Ooh. Guess what? There's some ocean animals that taste with their fingers and toes. Ooh. But that's just what they do. The octopus can taste with their suction cups on their tentacles. The sea star can taste with their little feet on the bottom of their bodies too. So most of the animals have some ability to smell or taste in some way. Now in our brains, smell and taste kind of work the same way. So we receive something to our nose or our mouth and there's a signal that goes to our brain that tells us what that is. Like you can come into the kitchen one day, take a big smell and, oh, somebody's cooking food. Or, mm, oh, somebody's making cookies. I make cookies over the weekend. I love the smell of cookies baking. So we can tell what something is by smelling it without tasting it. But how does something smell without a nose? 
Have you seen a nose on the front of an octopus? I don't know. Let's take a look. Here's my octopus friend. Hello. Is there a nose on our octopus? Not really. It kind of looks like they have a face like we do. But their mouth is underneath all of their tentacles. They can only taste with their suction cups. Now, they do have a mouth and a tongue. But as far as I know, the suction cups do all the tasting. And they can kind of reach into something, figure out what's there. And they can taste it with their tentacles and their suction cups without having to actually put it in their mouth. Now, that might be helpful if you're unsure if you want to eat something. But remember, anything they touch, they can taste. Really good questions, everybody. All right, Thomas is asking, do sharks have a lateral line? Yes, they do. Sharks are fish, and they have a lateral line, just like all these other lovely fish here in Blue Cavern do. So they can sense movement in the water, just like everybody else. Okay, well, Captain Joe, I'm sure, has figured out what to do with that tentacly armed animal playing with him. Let's see if we can find out what Captain Joe, Joe is doing. Where did Captain Joe go? My octopus and I could play baseball together. We'd be a whole team all Captain by ourselves. Captain Joe? Could you imagine that? <laughs> That'd be so crazy. Hey, hey, Captain Joe, you're on, you're on camera. Oh, uh, 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 studio. Call for help. I, I, I can't fight kind of tentacles for much longer. No bones. I don't oh, believe so you, Captain flexible. Joe. Uh, uh, well, it's a purple it. one. The kind that eats ocean rangers. Uh, I think octopus like to uh, eat crabs, not ocean rangers, uh, Joe. What? Oh. Well, that's good news. Maybe we should go and learn about octopuses, too. Yeah, you're probably right. But I wonder where I could learn more information about octopuses. Well, we are here, and you're there huh? sitting in front of the octopus exhibit. Oh! So I am. I bet you we can find an expert really close that can teach us all about these awesome animals. I bet there's one right behind you, saying, hanging out in the gallery with you today. All right, now we talked a little bit about octopus already. Captain Joe is having a lot of fun with an octopus upstairs at the Northern Gallery. I wish we could kind of go play with an octopus too. But here in the studio, we can use our different tools to learn about octopus. So we talked about their senses. We talked about how they taste. We talked about how they can do a whole lot of other things. Let's go back to how octopus can change color. They have a very special skin that has these little tiny windows. They're called chromatophores. It's a type of cell in their skin. Let's go back to my little orange octopus friend. And in their skin, they have all these little tiny spaces that they can open and close like little windows. And you can tell that they're changing colors. Now, when you zoom in with a microscope, it's really inter interesting to watch. But when you get to watch it on the whole animal, they can color change instantly and copy what they're looking at. Now, their eyes don't work exactly like ours do. So that's really interesting to look at is that they can see the colors that are all around them and they can copy the colors with their skin, but they can't sense colors like we do. So in our eye, the way our eyes work, is the light comes in through our pupil and it gets to the back of our eye and there's special cells in the back of our eye that can sense either movement or color and the ones that can sense color in our eyes they don't exist in an octopus so they can't see color the way that we do but they must still be able to sense color because they can copy exactly what they're sitting on so they can look just like it that's really interesting Let's see if we can check in with Angelina, who is an octopus expert here. Angelina has been working very hard with our octopus for many years, and she loves our giant Pacific octopus. Hello, boys and girls. Guess what? I found an expert that works here at the aquarium. This is Angelina. I'm an aquarist here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I take care of some of our fish and invertebrates that live in our cold water exhibits in our Northern Pacific Gallery. My favorite animal to take care of here at the aquarium is our giant Pacific octopus. Now, we're here talking about senses today, Angelina. Could you tell us about some of the senses that an octopus has? Octopuses are pretty amazing, Captain Joe. As you can see, she can change her color and her texture to camouflage herself while living in her exhibit. Now, not only can she do that, but she has hundreds of suction cups down her arm that she uses 
to grasp things like her food as well as explore her exhibit. And she's really, really strong. Now, not only is she really, really strong, but with those suction cups, she can even taste. Now, taste, we talked about this beforehand. Do giant Pacific octopuses eat ocean rangers? Oh no, they don't eat ocean rangers. Uh, our octopus here at the aquarium likes to eat fish, shrimp, squid, clam, mussels, and especially crab. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Angelina, on teaching us about our giant Pacific octopus. She's very, very cool. We're going to go ahead and head right back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Captain Joe and Angelina. Now, we learned a lot about octopus in their senses, but we're getting a lot of questions from our viewers about other animal senses, too. So somebody else was asking about, do the fish see color the way that we do? And fish can sense some ranges of color or see different parts that we can't see. So there's areas of light outside the visible spectrum, what we can see as colors all around us. Now we can sometimes use tools to help us see that, like an UV light or a X-ray machine can see different wavelengths of light, different areas of light that our eyes can't sense. Well, guess what? Honeybees can see UV light. So when they look at a flower, the flowers look very different than they do for us. And that's so that it can help them find a flower so that they can go and collect the pollen. Well, animals in the ocean have these similar abilities too, where some can either sense just brightness of light, like a sea star. So our sea star friends, they have little tiny eye spots in the ends of their arms. And they can't see like us, they couldn't see you or me on this program, they can only tell if it's bright or dark. Do you want to practice seeing like a sea star? Okay, so all you have to do is close your eyes. Close them, okay. Now put your hand over your eyes. Did it get a little darker? It does, that's about as much as a sea star can see, is just brightness or shadows, darkness. So sea stars can't see very well. But other animals like the sea otters, this is a plastic model of a sea otter skull. They have very good eyes just like we do and can see underwater too. They have a special membrane that goes over their eyes. It's kind of like having a see-through eyelid and that can help them while they're underwater. Even sharks can see underwater very well. Sometimes we think of some of these animals in the ocean not being very good at seeing very far or smelling very much, but their sense, their, all their senses are really well defined and adapted for these underwater habitats. But a quick question for you. One of my favorite groups of animals, the whales, do they smell their food underwater? Hmm. Well, whales are mammals like us. We breathe air, so whales breathe air too. Should they take a big old smell of something in the water? Ooh, probably not. What happens when we do that? You get a bunch of water in your nose. That's gross. Well, whales can't find their food through their sense of smell. Really, they can't even use their eyesight to find things either. They can only see about 30 to 50 feet into the water. Even though the blue whale has one of the biggest eyeballs on the planet, it can't see very far into the water. Well, they also dive very deep, so it gets pretty dark down there. We actually don't even understand all the different ways that baleen whales, like blue whales and humpbacks, can find their food. Their cousins, the toothed whales, have a really special sense called echolocation. Have you heard of echolocation? It's kind of like the way bats make sound at an object that bounces back and they can hear it. Well, with whales and dolphins that have teeth, they can use a special part of their forehead, has a fatty layer, and the sound comes out through that, bounces off an object, comes back to their jaw, and it goes into their ear. So the way that they use echolocation can help them find food, even if it's completely dark. And the largest toothed whale of all, the sperm whale, can still use some amount of echolocation. That's a really interesting group of senses that all these animals have. Okay, we have a couple more questions from our viewers. John's asking, what is the biggest fish we have on exhibit? Now, I'm not sure who's winning this competition currently, but it's either the giant sea bass or the Queensland grouper. Now, my friend Dana, I think, is looking for a picture of one of the two of them, but they both get very big. The giant sea bass can get up to about five or 600 pounds, and they live as long as humans do, 70 or 80 years. 
the Queensland grouper can get even bigger. The Queensland grouper can get up to 900 pounds and about 90 feet long. That's a pretty big fish. So potentially in the next 20 or 30 years, that fish can be that large. But right now, our Queensland grouper is about my size. So it's a big fish, not as large as it could be yet. And that's okay, it's still pretty young. Our Queensland grouper is probably in its mid to late 20s or early 30s, and they can live about 50 to 60 years. They are probably hiding, Dana's telling me. Uh, there's a lot of space for them to swim around. Remember, Blue Cavern has their giant sea bass. That's 142,000 gallons. That's a lot of space to hide and seek in. No, big tropical exhibit, our tropical reef habitat, is even bigger. It's got 350,000 gallons. That's a lot of space for somebody my size to hide in that area. So you can watch our webcams and you can try and use your special senses to see if you can find our giant sea bass and our Queensland grouper. Now, uh, I think this is Gage asking, how does a giant sea bass smell? Well, let's take a look at a fish face. Oh, where'd my fish friend go? Oh, there he is. Here's my fishy friend. So. We have our nose attached to our airway. So you can breathe in through your nose if you need to. But what about a fish? Now they breathe in through their mouth. Have you seen a goldfish? You know, they breathe, they pump water into their mouth over their gills. They have a little gill slit right here. Oh, right, right there. And they can pull the water into their mouth over their gills. Well, their noses don't need to do anything to help them breathe. Their noses are just for smelling. So it's more like a little pit or an inlet in their nose or in their face, and they can pull water in and they can smell and they can push the water back out. But they can't really sniff through their nose. Sharks are the same way. So sharks have a pit in their nose also. Here's my shark model. Very sharky looking shark. And he's got little nares or nasal pits in his face too. And sharks can do the same thing. Now sharks are even so special at smelling stuff, they can smell in direction. Now, if you are able to hear, you can test your abilities by having objects make noise around you. You can tell if it's coming from the left or the right. You can feel the vibrations too. So if you put your hands maybe on the floor or a table and someone taps around you, you closed your eyes, you could tell where those vibrations come from. So we can test that with our sense of t touch or sound but sharks use direction for smelling. They could tell if food came from that way or from that way. That's a really interesting sense, and it's a very specialized way that they can smell in their environment. Okay, we have a couple more questions. Let's see, Alistair is asking, do some, do some ocean animals feel emotions? This is a really interesting thing to test, Alistair. Scientists are very curious about this because we are very interested if animals can feel the same things that we feel are emotions. Well, scientists have figured out that a lot of animals, especially those that are social, like dolphins, can tell when there's members of their family that are missing. And some appear to show emotions of sadness or excitement or playfulness. Now it's hard to tell exactly what that emotion is because we'd have to scan their brain to make sure that it's the same as what we experience. But that's a little tough to do because they're an ocean animal. They need to be wet in the water. But we can do a lot of experiments and tests by watching them or giving them different objects to play with or interact with. And we can see if they're responding to them in the same way that we might. Now we have figured out in the scientific community that a lot of animals in the ocean do exhibit memories. They do have uh, an idea of favorites there's a lot of animals, especially here at the aquarium, that have a very favorite food. And if you don't give them their favorite food, they don't want to eat it. Some of our animals can be very picky eaters. The giant sea bass has been a picky eater in the past. I remember making food for the giant sea bass and remember getting reports back from the divers that it just doesn't like sardines today. So I, next time I would make more mackerel for it. So they do have a, some kind of favoritism towards other objects or towards their food or even towards a favorite area to be in the exhibit space. So potentially they do have very complex emotions, but it takes a lot more learning on our part about the animals to see if they do have emotions just like we do. Valentina is asking, how do fish know how deep they are? That's a very interesting question because I'm not even sure how they know how deep in the ocean they are. But fish 
can use very special abilities to move up and down in the water. Let's go back to our fishy friend. Ah, now they have a, an organ about right here in their body. It's called a swim bladder. If you were learning to swim, did you wear any inflatable parts on your arms, any floaties to help you move around? Or maybe you don't even want to sink at all, so you're in an inner tube and you're just floating around the pool. Yeah, so they have this ability to inflate this swim bladder to help them from sinking too much. Well, sharks don't have a swim bladder. Sharks have a really large liver that makes a special oil that helps them float. So they have abilities to make sure they can float or sink or not float at all. Guess what? The flatfish, the halibut, likes to sit in the sand. It doesn't want to float. So they really don't even have a swim bladder. Now, how deep in the, o in the water of the ocean they are, they might be able to sense because the pressure pushes down on their bodies. And we can learn a little bit more about that in our science of diving class this afternoon. But when the animals are down there, their brains don't process information quite the same as ours. So they can tell if they're deep or if they're shallow, but they have other abilities to swim into those levels. All right, last couple questions, my friend. We're just about out of time. Uh, Jerbon or Jerbon is asking, how can sea stars move if they can't really see? Well, you can test this in your home too. If you close your eyes and you try to move around, you'd be using your sense of touch to find out where you are, right? Well, they can move around and as long as it's brighter or darker, they can move towards the brightness or the darkness and they can choose where they want to go. Scientists actually tested this and found that sea stars kind of prefer to be in the shadows a lot more than in the bright sunlight. Sean's asking, can fish sense day and night? Yes, they can. Some fish only come out during the daytime. Other fish only come out at nighttime. And then there's other fish that only come out in the in-between during dawn and dusk. That's a really interesting ability is that they prefer a time of day to be at the surface of the water or come out of their burrows or homes. Very cool. John's asking, oh, John already asked that question. We got that one answered, that's okay. Remember, it could be the sea bass or the grouper. Not sure who's heavier right now, but that's our bigger fishes right here in the aquarium. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today for another episode of Aquarium Live, where we get to hang out with Joe, learn about our octopus. Now, I think Joe wants to say goodbye, too. Is Joe ready to say goodbye? I'm sure he's done hanging thank out Thank you, boys him. and girls. It was my pleasure taking you through the aquarium today and teaching you more about animal senses. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to get back to some research that I started earlier today. Oh. Captain Joe, signing out. Oh. That's such a good what book. What research are you doing? We like Captain Joe around here, and we're glad that you could help learn about animals with us today, everybody viewing at home. Don't forget, if you didn't catch our presentation live, you can always email us at live at lbaop.org and still ask us questions that you are curious about animal senses. Have a good rest of your Tuesday afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on our Aquarium Online Academy.